I was gonna record, I don't know why I'm doing this, but anyway, it happened and it's amazing. What's the word? Um, I'm describable, I'm polluable. <laughs> Fuck you then. <laughs> this crazy shit, man. Other than kayak, if I have the strength, if I had to hang on to anything, buttons left. Extraordinary descriptions there from Lismore. That's our local business operator, Mel, speaking to our reporter, Catherine Gregory. Well, as floodwaters around Lismore start to slowly recede, communities further downstream are battling dangerous conditions and some residents remained trapped inside their homes or on the roof. Keely Patch told Gavin Cooch she was stranded on the second floor at her, of her house at Bunga Wollaban for more than 24 hours before being rescued by boat. More than... <coughs> More than 55,000 55, houses in New South Wales, somewhere in town in New South Wales, Australia, underwater, everything. They've lost everything. They've lost everything. Millions of dollars. No, oh, oh, floods. It fuck you, man. It's ladies with babies, people with kids. Poof. Nothing. Fuck, mate. This morning. I've lived here for 26 years, and the biggest flood I've ever seen covered the bottom step, and this one went so far over the second floor. How were you able to, yeah. you know, seek higher ground when you were already on the second story? Oh, I was really scared, yeah. I was, um, I just kept, like, propping, you know, furniture up on things, putting all my pets up on beds and on tables, just, like, watching. If I didn't get out this morning, I was going to have a real hard time. So I didn't have, like, the strength if I had to hang on to anything. I didn't have strength for that. Also, like, my roof is no safe way to get up on the roof until I could float up onto it. And then there's nowhere to... Like, my animals, it's, they wouldn't have survived, so... So are they OK? Yeah, I've got, the, got two cats and two dogs out now. And how did you go about getting help? Because I imagine you're probably trying to get in touch with SES and having some difficulty. Yeah, I, I called a few times from yesterday morning to start because I knew it would be a bit of a line-up to get out. But um, I would probably still be there till tonight if I was waiting for the emergency people because there's so many people. When did they arrive? Like, these, these were obviously... Are these friends or are these... Yeah, these are yeah, people that are just going around helping everyone. It's just amazing. Are they on a tinny? Yeah. Yeah, it was just in the last 20 minutes, really. They're off now to keep going. That's Northern Rivers resident Keely Patch speaking there with our reporter, Gavin Coote. Well, the flood danger is now moving towards Ballina, a coastal town in northern New South Wales. The SES says up to 7,000 homes could be inundated if flood levels rise. Evacuation centres are already full. The Ballina, Ballina Shire Ca uh, Council Mayor, Sharon Calwaller, has told Carly Williams the town is bracing for a one in 500 year flood. Okay, oh, it's going to be raining for the next 78 hours. It's raining outside my house right now, really slowly, and it's been doing that for the last 11 hours. You understand? And it's going to be more, 79 hours more, another four or five days of it. You understand? And there's going to be more towns and more people, more shops. This is incredible. Australia cops it all the time this time of year, and it's incredible. They love it. Some people in the, oh, yeah, that's a shit man. That's a shit man. That's a shit man. Good, good, good. Australia cops it. They winch every year. Now this time, they winch there. Oh, they have floods. And because of the uh, awesome layer, right? They fuck the awesome layer, man. They stuff the bloody oceans. They stuff the thing, and it just goes off. I don't know how. It's like, it's like um, um, United States. It gets snow, right? All right. United States gets snow. I don't know how. And people go, whoa. 
wrong time, wrong place, blah, blah, what, how can, how can I get, you know, then in India, the same, you know, the country India, oh, what, 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 how did it get, not meant to, not meant to, uh, Greece and Macedonia and other countries called snow and other, what, not meant to, not meant to, not meant to, and some people in the world are proud of this, you know that, Illuminati or some crap, they harp, they are prayer, prayer, prayer. It's gonna become a civil war in your own country. You want it? You want that? You don't want no baby crying, cat call your tongue. YouTube, YouTube, YouTube. Hey, oh, hey, oh, hey, oh, hey. YouTube, YouTube. Hey, oh, hey, oh, hey. YouTube, you. You know international computer network. Come on, people can't to make money. How are they gonna make money if they, this is happening all around them? Floods, cyclones, hot weather. Uh, coronavirus, China, the whole lot, nothing is taken to international court, all right, for genocide, civil war, or history, or whatever you do with a machine gun, or anything, bombs, nothing is doing nothing, you understand, nothing is doing nothing, AI, bullshit, this, that crap, this is boiling, this is boiling, YouTube, 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 Facebook, 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 Google, 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 International Computer Network. Resources are stretched to the limit. The little local bowling club, the Cherry Street Bowling Club, is being overwhelmed at the moment and we do need some urgent resources there. And those levels we're seeing, we've never seen before. We've been trying to get a new SES command centre built in Ballina, but, uh, you know, we're struggling to get the finances because they can't even make a cup of tea without the water pouring into their teacup from the ceiling. It's so old and dilapidated. We've also got a homeless situation that we had prior to this event. So we've got a massive problem with homeless people too because they were camping around the edges of the river and sand dunes and things, they've all been washed out. It's a pretty sad situation. How are you going personally, Sharon? It's very distressing to see what's happening. Uh, my son lost his home in, in Lismore. It went straight over the top of his roof. Nobody ever thought that it would peak where it did. People just couldn't prepare enough. That's the Mayor of Ballina there, Sharon Cadwallader, speaking to our reporter, Carly Williams. Well, there's also major flooding in towns in the Clarence River catchment, which includes Grafton, Almara, McLean and Yamba. People in those areas are preparing for the worst. Our reporter David Sparks is in McLean. David, good afternoon. Oh, what, what's going on there at the moment? Well, I'm standing on the levee at McLean on the Clarence River and the big question here all morning has basically been will it or won't it? As in, will this flood water spill over the top of the levee here? It's very, very close. I'd say the flood waters have risen to be about 20 centimetres from the top of the levee uh, and there's a massive expanse of brown water stretching right out across the valley. Now, this levee is a bit of a weird sight right now. People are standing on a dry footpath on one side of the levee uh, and on the other side of that concrete levee, the water level is basically up to their waists. Uh, the water level has risen slightly since I got here this morning. Um, the big unknown is, is whether it will indeed spill over the top of the levee. It was due to peak around late morning, so there's hope that it won't go over the levee. Uh, if it does go over the levee, though, dozens of businesses in the main street here will flood. David, what are people doing preparing to, to get ready there? Well, for a few people here in McLean, it's already too late. The water has gotten into a few houses around here. Uh, but as I've been moving around the town, along the river, people, mainly SES volunteers, have been flat out filling sandbags, transporting them up and down the river and laying them out, uh, in particular on top of the earthen part of the levee. Uh, I spoke a short time ago with one of the people organising this operation. Ken Bailey is a duty officer with the SES. At the moment, uh, our priority is to get as many sandbags down to the levee wall to, uh, to shore that up. There's a few leaks down there. Um, obviously, we don't want it to, uh, to breach the levee wall, um, but that's all hands on deck at the moment. Do you know what the water level is doing at the moment? Yeah, well, look, it's, um, it's definitely up uh, from last night um, quite a bit, and it will probably rise until mid-morning. So hopefully we're getting close to the top now, uh, and we're just keeping our fingers crossed. If the water goes over the levee, how much of McLean is vulnerable if the water starts to spill over the levee? 
OK, well, the main uh, town street um, could go underwater um, and some of those low-lying uh, houses along that river street, which is obviously directly behind, um, and those lower areas uh, that, that flow back. But a lot of the houses, etc., in McLean are up on a hill, so that's a good thing. But all, all those low-lying houses, um, yeah, they, they could get more water around them. You've got a few boats around. You haven't had to use any of them yet? I oh, know. We've been out in, out in boats. We've had a couple of flood rescues, you know, um, evacuations for people with medical conditions. Um, we also deliver medical supplies because there's people out on the islands that can't get their medical supplies, and we've got a medical run shortly. So, yeah, we all, all those sorts of things with flood boats. Well, I'm now looking at a double-storey house surrounded by flood water. The water is about a metre up its walls, uh, and there's a couple working away in the garage behind a kind of aluminium barrier that they've put across their garage door to stop the water from getting in. Uh, if the water rises, I'd say another 30 centimetres, it'll surge over that barricade and flood their home. Let's go over and ask how they're going. I'm Chi Pearsall. And you, sir? Uh, Peter. And you've got in front of your garage door a, a, a large aluminium plate, I'm going to call it, let's say around 1.2 metres. Yeah, yeah. Um, and the water should be flowing heavily into your garage right now, but yeah. it's, it's blocked by this giant plate and I'm astonished that it's sealed so well. There are there are leaks so we've got some pumps that just to maintain the... It's not 100% but it's really it's manageable. Good. Yeah, yeah, it's Otherwise manageable. Otherwise it wasn't been gods. Are you still worried now or do you think it looks like about 20 or 30 centimetres leeway left there? Yeah, yes. about, yeah about 21 centimetres at the moment and the, the tide stopped at 8.37 this morning, supposedly the high tide but it hasn't dropped and it may continue to go up because there's so much water movement in the river at the moment so we don't know what's happening. So are you still worried? Yeah, we're a bit worried. We're worried that if it goes over the barriers then basically... Yeah, if it goes over the barriers... We're then we can't do anything, yeah. yeah. If it goes over this barrier you're going to have over a metre of water in your house. We're going yeah. to, yes, yeah. 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 That's McLean residents there, Peter and Chi Pearsall, speaking to our reporter, David Sparks. Well, let's jump the border now. And as floodwaters slowly subside in some parts of southeast Queensland, the true extent of the damage is being revealed. An estimated 20,000 houses have been affected in Brisbane alone, and tens of thousands are still without power. Police are now responding to reports of looting. A 21-year-old man has been charged and two other cases are being investigated. Hundreds of people have spent days in evacuation centres, unsure of when they will be able to return home. Stephanie Smale reports. Makeshift bedding lines the walls and is scattered between tables in what is usually a huge dining room at a North Brisbane Services Club. Fred Black has spent two nights at this evacuation centre with his wife Moira. They were rescued from their home in the suburb of Windsor. A book came into the front of the house. It was quite unbelievable because we've got a fairly high fence. We was able to get over the fence with a large boat, picked myself and my wife up, took us up to the top of the, top of the road and then said there's a, a centre out at uh, Wavell Heights, so we managed to get out here. He's returned home to inspect the damage, but it's unclear how long it will take to clean up enough to stay there. What was it like when you got back? Absolutely devastating. It's unbelievable. It's, just, it's like a battle zone. It's hard to really believe how bad it is. Luckily, it only came into the house about uh, 100 mil with mud, so I was able to clean all the floor around the house. But being a house on stumps underneath, there's a mass of stuff in it. It's just a complete wreck. He's coming to terms with the huge clean-up. It's losing a lifetime of treasured memories that hurts the most. My wife Mona's got albums and albums of photographs recorded our life from the time we were married. And they're all gone. They were all underneath the house? They were under the house in the library, yes. <laughs> We just have to throw them all out and pretend it didn't happen, you know, just keep it in our minds. Linda lives near Brisbane CBD and had to beg a taxi driver to bring her to the centre as the floodwaters rose. And I said, look, please, like, I'm desperate. How did you feel when you finally got here? Oh, I was so relieved. I was like, thank God, like, I made it to a safe spot because in 2011 I evacuated in waist deep water from St Lucia and in 2011 the house that I'm living in now flooded as well. So I was really, really, like, stressed thinking.
thinking how much water is it going to be? Is it going to be high? She doesn't know when she'll be able to return home and she's not alone. Chaplain Lance Murgard says people are starting to worry about where they will stay when the evacuation centres close. What I'm starting to hear is a lot of people don't have flood insurance. The house is insured uh, for burglary and fire and all those things but not flood because the premiums just skyrocket for them and they are in dire straits. Um, I would really appreciate our leadership being able to speak into these issues so we've got some clarity to give to people uh, because the longer we wait, the greater their trauma will exist. Eight people have died in the southeast Queensland flooding and two people are still missing. Large parts of the region are still flooded and major flood warnings remain for the Brisbane, Albert and Logan rivers. More than 40,000 properties in the southeast are still without power, making it harder for the mammoth clean-up effort to really begin. Stephanie Smale. <laughs> Let's go overseas now and the number of refugees from Ukraine arriving in neighbouring countries is escalating and many more are expected to be internally displaced in Ukraine. Gavin Coote reports. Many of the hundreds of thousands of Ukrainians who fled their country are crossing the border at Poland where snow is falling and the humanitarian crisis is mounting. Helena Krajewska is with aid group Polish Humanitarian Action. We have our employees there assessing needs. We have been preparing the food packages, hygiene packages. While Poland has resisted accepting migrants in the past, Helena Krajewska says this time is different. Let's just say that the solidarity uh, overtook the whole nation because people from Ukraine are our neighbours. You know, we work with them, we study with them. There are more than two, two million people from Ukraine in Poland before that. The language, the culture, everything is very similar uh, to Poland. Uh, so everybody knows somebody from Ukraine, so this hits very close to the heart. That's why whole Poland is opening doors, letting people in. Uh, everybody is gathering packages, trying to just pick up some somebody from the border and take them wherever they want. Michael Capone has just arrived at the key border crossing of Medica. He runs a disaster relief organisation called Global Empowerment Mission, based in the US state of Florida. Any given point in time, we have $10, $15 million worth of supplies ready to go. So that's called pre-positioning. So we're ready, right? So when a disaster happens, whatever it is, a fire in the Amazon, you know, hurricane in the Bahamas, a tornado in Kentucky just recently, you know, we have the uh, ability to, you know, move real quickly. And because an invasion of Ukraine had appeared imminent for weeks, he was able to send the first shipment of supplies from the US as soon as Russia had moved in. Supplies range, we have hygiene, food to blankets to sleeping bags, tents, generators, things of that nature. How big a humanitarian crisis do you think we're on the cusp of, particularly when we look at Poland? Well, you have 44 million people. With 44 million people, if you just had 5% of them leave, right, you'd be dealing with 2.2 million people leaving right away. People exiting a country that quickly. There is no border towns right now in NATO countries that can absorb anything like that, you know? And take a small town in Australia. Can you imagine 400,000 people showing up at your doorstep all of a sudden with no, no nothing? Aid groups say they're also aware of the humanitarian needs in eastern Ukraine, but the intense fighting there is making it difficult for them to respond. That's Gavin Coote reporting. Well, you're about to hear from one of the thousands of Ukrainian civilians joining the fight against the advance of Russian forces. Ivan lives in the northern Ukrainian city of Chernigov. Ivan is Ukrainian, but he's married to a Russian woman. He's now one of the many residents of Chernigov, leaving their civilian jobs behind to battle against the Russian army. Uh, my normal job is uh, working in the tourism, so sometimes bartending, but over here... I also use my bartender skills of making the Molotov cocktails, trying to help the people that start to suffer. Maybe they don't have the food, so we can deliver them. If some of the people been under attack and the house has been destroyed, so we repair the windows, shutting them down. What's the situation like at the moment in Chernigov? The situation is not good because, uh, let's say, five days ago, I was uh, walking around the streets of Chernigiv, you know, 
drinking coffee, admiring the sightings, uh, and then next morning I've heard that we were declared by the uh, with the war from Russia, and uh, I woke up early in the morning with the sounds of the bombs, uh, and it totally changes the life not only of all the people, but today five days after I cannot recognize my hometown. It's totally different. In what way? What do you say? It's destroyed. Uh, it's destroyed. Like uh, lots of the houses where the civilian people live in being under attack. We have the bombs that uh, hit the kindergarten and the schools. Uh, we have a cinema. We had actually a cinema that was built in the 1930s, and during even the Second World War, it stands still and not being destroyed. But yesterday, it was totally destroyed. So you have joined with some of the other um, men and other citizens of the city to to fight the Russians. We defend our land. So far. We are defending our land and yeah, we are fighting for our truth, for our freedom, for our independence, for our future. Doesn't matter which way you are doing it, whether you are helping, whether you are fighting, just one for all and all for one. Has it been frightening so far? Of course, it's each day you are scared because if you are not scared, you are crazy. All of the people scared, of course, but because if we won't fight, they will fight us. That's That's the way. How heavy has the fighting been in the city? We are under fire. Uh, my hometown, Chernigo, is under the fire. I can easily say this, but we are fighting and it's not scared us. It just makes us more angry and more united. Could you have imagined a, a few weeks ago that you would be in this situation now? Oh, Sally, never, because a few weeks ago uh, you will be maybe laughing, but I was in Russia. Two weeks ago, I arrived from Russia to Ukraine on the 22nd of February. And two days later, when I was woke up by my friends, that they told me that the Russia declared the war for us, to us. I was like literally shocked. How much do you worry for the civilians who, who are in Chernogov? I think about all the Ukrainian people uh, all over the Ukraine, in each city, in each small village. Uh, you know, you don't know what's going to happen over there. But like each life matter. I feel sorry about the Russian people as well, and especially the Russian militarians, because what I see in the news and everywhere, they look frightened. They look like they don't know where they are going, like they were cheated or something like that. Just pray for the whole world to stop it. Is your family safe, Ivan? Uh, I am here with my mom. Uh, but some of my family is in Russia, so double trouble. Do you fear for your life, Ivan? Oh, of course I could be killed. But if I will, I'll be with my country. That's Ivan, one of the residents of Chernigov uh, in northern Ukraine, fighting against the Russian advance. Well, that's all from the World Today team for this Tuesday. The PM team will be along later today. Join us again at the same time tomorrow. Thank you for being with us. I'm Sally Sara. Take care. Okay, I just like to say this is not on. This is going on too far now. And it keeps going and going and going and going and going. A-O-R, A-O-A. God alien, God alien, God alien, God alien, God alien, come to earth. God alien, come to earth. Stop war. No more war, no more floods, no more earthquake, no more typhoon, no more nothing. Something I forgot to say. Ah la 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 la, wait, oh, wait, 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 oh, wait, oh, wait, oh, ah. My people, my people, my people, oh, wait, oh. Ah, you, ah, you, ah, 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 oh. Okay, I don't have anything. I don't know I what's meant to go down here. Let me try one more thing. Let me try. Let me try. Let me try. Not trying to do anything special or anything. I'm a beautiful person. I'm a nice. Please come in. This this mind control <laughs> Hector. Me mind control people.
Kane Warne has gone. Um, I'm sure there are a lot of people listening to this at the moment uh, thinking this can't be true. And this is this is fake news, but uh, oh, it's just horrible uh, because there's there's no one in the last 20 or 30 Shane Warne, the cricketer, has died somehow. The years of Australian cricket has had such uh, an influence as, as Warne on, on the game, on all of us. Um, even people who, who didn't understand or follow cricket uh, were taken by Warren's extraordinary personality and uh, his uh, his showmanship and his skill. I mean, if Bradman was uh, the first Australian to draw everyone away from the bar at the cricket club, yeah. This is ABC News. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, they've got very few belongings. What do you mean they're walking there? I mean, how far are these people walking? Why aren't they driving? Well, in ordinary circumstances, it wouldn't be very far to come at all. I mean, there was a group of women um, all from the same family uh, that I, I spent some time with. This is my daughter. How old is she? She's four years old, and right now she plays with a doll, which uh, which is present from people from this village uh, for refugees. <laughs> mm. uh, yeah. So you you sort of you count yourself quite lucky in the sense that you you've managed to get out. Yes. In a safe in a pretty safe way. Yeah, I, I know. I, it was very difficult to to choose that I go. ABC News. ABC News with Satyam Weinstein. Shane Warne is being remembered as one of cricket's greatest players and a genuine entertainer following his shock death at the age of 52. Warne revolutionised cricket during the 1990s with his dynamic leg spin bowling that captured just over a thousand wickets in tested one day internationals before his retirement in 2007. The death toll from the flooding in Queensland has risen to 11. Police divers have found the body of a woman on the Gold Coast. Police had been searching for the 42 year old at Mudra Bar. The woman was reported missing on Tuesday but was last seen on Sunday. Safety checks are being conducted on buildings in the flood affected city of Lismore in northern New South Wales. The checks are being carried out by the state emergency service and council crews in flood damaged areas of Lismore including the CBD. The Lismore council says it's too early to say what buildings will be saved or condemned with over 3,000 to check. The council says it's best for the public to avoid Avoid entering damaged buildings as some will be unsafe. And Ukraine's president has condemned Western leaders for again ruling out the introduction of a no fly zone in his country. Volodymyr Zelensky says Western leaders knew Russian aggression was likely to increase and is accusing them of granting Vladimir Putin a license to continue bombing towns. ABC News. I'm looking for something now. I don't know what I'm looking for more. He says here. Uh, extra. Okay. I don't know what it is. Huh. <laughs> In the wake of Russian invasion of Ukraine, what can you do to tell the truth from fiction in far, fast-paced war ready made for digital con consumption? <laughs> what the hell? Are you nuts? Are you going nuts, mate? No matter like nuts. Okay, it wasn't anything else. Uh, maybe, maybe like this. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Okay, we 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 we're gonna take a little little tour, and then we do it like the we legal. Ah, we di el tu paripo. I got no idea what they going on, eh? You know, you know me no tua and the tua. I no me no get bete por un amigo, a un mano. Me. Some wonder whether this war could lead to President Putin's demise. I'm sure it will. Nobody knows when it happens. Uh, this month, this year, or in few years. Uh, but for sure, it's the beginning of his end. 
That remains to be seen. What can be expected is Vladimir Putin will do all he can to crush these protests. Steve Kinane, ABC News. And demonstrations against the invasion have continued right across the world, including in London and Barker with this report. Every day now since Russia invaded Ukraine, there have been big protests in London, but this is the biggest crowd yet. Thousands crammed into Trafalgar Square, many of them members of Ukraine's 40,000 strong community in London. Their anger at Vladimir Putin is palpable. Together we will win! Together we will win! It's completely ruined the cities. People die, children die. I have a lot of friends in Ukraine, a lot of relatives. Anger, sadness, shock. Like, it's, it's what happened is something that I could never imagine would happen. The war should act and act immediately. They should stop to help to stop this uh, war. And, just, and we're still waiting. But Russians too have turned out against their own government. I am here to support Ukrainian people and to protest against this invasion from Russia. I don't support this and I'm ashamed that my uh, leader of my country actually did that. There have also been protests outside Russian embassies, not just here in London, but in countries around the world. European nations have stepped up sanctions in recent days to freeze the overseas assets of Russia's central bank and isolate Russia from the global financial system. Well, the war in Ukraine has left Russia, as we just heard, increasingly isolated, and it's now also facing a widening ban from sport. This includes banning Russian and Belarusian athletes from competing in the Paralympic Games in Beijing. For decades, the IOC has walked a fine line in the name of political neutrality. But now, Ukrainian athletes have demanded that the IOC take a stand. Aggressors countries should not have any right to participate in sports events. In a statement, the IOC said for the first time it was abandoning its neutrality and recommending that sports don't invite or allow the participation of Russian and Belarusian athletes. Suspend the Russian and Belarusian athletes and officials from the participation in Paralympic Winter Games in Beijing 2022. FIFA has gone further, banning the Russian national team from international football, meaning it will likely miss this year's World Cup. Whether the sport boycotts will make any difference beyond symbolism is another question. Well, sport is important to Putin, um, personally and also as a tool for propaganda. Daniel Medvedev's ascension to the number one ranking in tennis might have been one of those tools. But now there are calls for a ban on Russian players, which would stop him playing the Grand Slams. And Russia's number one women's tennis player, Anastasia Palyachenkova, said in a tweet she was opposed to the invasion. I'm not afraid to clearly state my position. I'm against war and violence, she said. In a country harsh on dissent, those are bold words. David Mark, ABC News. And that's where we will leave the program. You can always watch the show on iView and there are more world news. Okay, that was one. They uh, saw me Bobcast. Bobcast. <laughs> You're fucking too gay. Okay. Last one. I'm going, <laughs> I don't know how long, but it's stupid. I'm stupid.
Across New South Wales, one in three people count on NRMA insurance. Including the house at number 12. From Goulburn to Gunnada, New South Wales chooses NRMA insurance. Oh my God. Watch drumming tutorials oh without Wi-Fi God. and jam uninterrupted. Try YouTube oh Premium God. on us. Well, now, now, now you... Hibernation oh is oh a concept we're very familiar God. with. Fucking God, my God. Many sci-fi stories God. require we hibernation to work. When you need you. While imaginations what have been running mean, wild man? in pop culture, you, the signs of hibernation me? and a shorter state called torpor have been lagging behind. Oh, now this God. is changing. An array Give of potential medical me. benefits Give is driving scientists from labs around the world to search for the underlying mechanisms of this near-magical state. To travel for century or for millennia, that's way out of our reach at the moment. But hibernation could bridge you from a condition in which you are changing the temperature, of course. Although this research into hibernation relies on cutting-edge science, its foundations can be traced back decades. What did you do? Look, I press that button. Right, right, right. Now, 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 where are we? Where are we, please? Oh, my God. Are you nuts? Now, 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 let's... Go back to and climate. In a new report, the IPCC says that more than three and a half billion people are highly vulnerable to the effects of climate change. We speak to one of the lead authors. What is new really is increasing evidence that the window of opportunity, the time is really, the time window is closing for action and that pertains to both mitigation and adaptation. California's never-ending drought is bringing locals into conflict with big agriculture. How is that community adjusting to its new normal? To top that off, uh, when these communities come home, uh, they don't have clean drinking water in their homes. Uh, that's a real tragedy. And we're in Antarctica to meet the scientists studying the so-called doomsday glacier, which could lead sea levels to rise by three meters. So it's a runaway, unstable glacier that right now might be right on a knife's edge and may in fact pass that point. From Bloomberg's World Headquarters in New York, I'm Kaylee Lines, and this is Bloomberg Green. Attention fixed on the war raging in Ukraine just days after an invasion by Russia, there's a higher than normal chance that the latest report from the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change will go overlooked. But that is, in a way, something that the hundreds of authors worried about in compiling this 3,500-page report. Among the worst-case scenarios analyzed for future warming is a world where a resurgent nationalism, concerns about competitiveness and security, and regional conflicts make global collaboration nearly impossible. Released on February 28th, Climate Change 2022 Impacts, Adaptation and Vulnerability focuses on the interplay that connects warming-driven impacts such as heat waves and floods to human society. The IPCC scientists determined that some impacts are already irreversible and that as many as 3.6 billion people now live in settings that are highly vulnerable to climate change. In this edition of Bloomberg Green, we'll focus on those communities struggling to adapt to a changing environment, like California's residents engaged in a battle with big agriculture. Plus, we'll travel to Antarctica, where we spoke with mathematician David Holland about the so-called doomsday glacier and the very real possibility of a rapid rise of sea levels. But first, to the IPCC report. I spoke earlier with one of its lead authors, Matthias Garshagen, about the key takeaways. Joining me now is Matthias Garshagen, lead author of the IPCC report. Matthias, thank you so much for joining me. And obviously, it is a massive report that you have put together. Just give me some of the key takeaways, things that are new from this report. Well, I think we, on the one side, we are, we are confirming a couple of things that have been there before. But what is new really is increasing evidence that the window of opportunity, the time is really the time window is closing for action, and that pertains to both mitigation and adaptation. If you were to avoid drastic impacts, irreversible impacts, um, and if you want to keep the planet livable as we know it, the window is really closing for, for immediate action. And this is uh, something we see quite clearly in the literature and more clearly than we saw it before. 
Well, and, and I saw in the report talking about near-term actions that could limit warming to close to one and a half degrees Celsius would substantially reduce losses. But it can't necessarily eliminate them all. And elsewhere in the report, it talked about substantial damages and irreversible losses. I mean, how far gone are we already? We see that even with the current warming, so we have a warming of about 1.1 1, 1, 1. 1 degrees, we already see drastic impacts, drastic adverse impacts. Um, we see that uh, certain systems, certain ecosystems are approaching their limits um, of, of adaptation and the limits of what they can do in terms of adaptation. We also have seen in the previous years, um, and I think everybody can remember that quite well, um, a, a massive increase in extreme events, uh, that is extreme droughts, extreme floods, extreme storms, uh, forest fires and so forth. And so we already see drastic impacts, but we see that this is going much further, of course, if um, uh, warming doesn't stop there, but increases to two degrees, and then we see a drastic, a very sharp increase in risk and impacts if we go even beyond um, two degrees, and that is very clear. And if you, as you say, we're reaching some limits of adaptation, what does that mean for mitigation? What is the policy prescription here, or the action that needs to be taken? The real implication is we need very urgent um, action for mitigation to really keep the temperature of 1.5 degrees. If you overshoot over 1.5 degrees, if you go beyond that, then the impacts will be all the more and more drastic. Yeah? And even if we go if we go beyond that, I give you an example: the risk of extinction, um, um, biodiversity loss, if you wish, in biodiversity hotspots increases tenfold if you uh, increase the global warming level by three degrees as compared to 1.5 degrees. So that's a very drastic example of the stark differences that we see between these these different uh, warming levels. Um, well, and that brings me to, obviously, this report talks a lot about the influence that humans have had on the environment. But how does that come full circle and what happens with the environment then comes back to humankind and influences us? Oh, absolutely. And that's that's very important. The, the, the report takes a very integrated uh, look at things because also the literature looks at these risks more in a more integrated manner. So the health of nature, the health of ecosystems is very important to sustain human communities, farming communities, fishing communities, but also urban communities, which depend on, on ecosystem services at the end of the day. And these links are now, are now very clear. At the same time, what we need to understand is the, 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 the risks that we face in the future and the potential impacts do not only depend on the level of warming and on climate change, they also depend drastically, of course, on the choices we take as societies and the, the development pathways, if you wish, that we take. And, and um, really the difference in the future will also be made by whether or not societies will be able to reduce these vulnerabilities, to increase adaptive capacities, and a lot of global collaboration speaks to that also, although whether we will not be able to do that. So the risk that we see in a couple of decades will, will greatly depend on which vulnerabilities do societies have by then. This report is literally thousands of pages long. It's quite extensive. If there is one key message, one key call to action that you would like to get across, what would it be? I think it's really that we, for the moment, we still have it in our hands. Uh, we can take decisions to change course on, on both climate change and mitigation because that will be absolutely needed in the long term to avoid drastic impacts. In the more immediate uh, short term, the, more, the next decades, we also need to get going with more serious climate change adaptation and also that we have it in our hand, but that window is closing and it's closing fast. That was Matthias Garshagen there, one of the lead authors of the IPCC report. His message, it's not too late, but the clock is ticking. Joining me now to dig deeper into the report is our sustainability editor, Eric Rostin. Eric, the clock is ticking. Who is it ticking fastest for? Who potentially could be hardest hit here? The context is that climate change is fundamentally unfair. The rich countries that put all the pollution up in the air and have caused the warming are not the ones on the front lines. The people on the front lines are people in low-lying, poor countries who are dependent on, uh, on agriculture in a way the United States is not. Um, and that will exacerbate existing inequality both within countries and around the world. What are some examples of good and bad adaptations that governments or even companies are making so far? This report is, is 3,600 pages. It covers you know, the whole world. And so the scale of adaptation options is phenomenal, but they lead from familiar things like irrigation, uh, which can be sort of you know, a, a hit or a miss. You don't want to use up all your groundwater, but you want to keep food prices low, uh, to the really novel and co still controversial things like geoengineering, which is 
putting chemicals up in the air to reflect some sunlight and hopefully keep temperatures down a little bit, even though that doesn't solve the main problem. The scale of change is quite considerable and sort of intimidating. Uh, th this report basically says that there's a lot we can do. There's not a lot we have done, but the window is closing, so we better get started. Yep, time is not on our side. Thank you so much to our sustainability editor, Eric Rostin. Now coming up, we'll look at one community that may have already missed its opportunity to adapt as California is ravaged by drought. Okay, I'm out, I'm out this time, I'm out, I'm out. Name of God, name of God, name of God, name of God. Where, where the hell am I going? Okay, I'm going to say something about climate change, right? Maybe we cannot change climate change because it's being destroyed or the atmosphere or the pollution. Too many waste, too many satellite antennas up in the space. <laughs> something that hit the moon the other day, I don't know what it was, something hit the moon. Um, oh, my my um, interpretation of all this is um, I don't have a love, I don't have a love, I love, I need a love, I need love, I need love. God to me, God to me, precious to me, be nice to me, be good to me, question to me, question to me, listen and reply. More things that I am. I've got a little bit of a cough today. I can't stop this little cough. I need to look after myself. It's raining outside. The time is 11.11 11 at night and it's crazy this time of year. I don't know how to fix all this, you know, but you could help me. I'm a nice, nice, nice. Sorry for swearing. Sorry for going off. Sorry. You, 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 YouTube, 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 <laughs> Facebook, Facebook, <laughs> Twitter, Twitter, <laughs> Google, Google. Anyway, International Computer Network, I'm going to leave it here to whatever you reckon. You know, we don't want you to cry. We don't want you to live like a bad animal. We don't want you to understand things badly, badly, badly. People do have nice human families. Families to the families. Yo hablo español, yo soy chileno, 34 años en Australia y nunca he vuelto a Chile. Yo soy el chileno de aquí, de Australia, yo hablo inglés. Y usted me ha escuchado en inglés muchas veces, me puede decir algo lo que usted quiera. Anyway, question to question to question to question and subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. I'm going and um, hopefully you can marry me, kiss me, say something, something about this from doing from nothing and what I got to do, listening, reply out there, please. Thank you. I love you, sexy, please. Opa, otra vez, si? Si, oh, shoo, fucking hell. It's gone again, it's gone again. It's made that thing where it's disappeared. <laughs> I have to go up here now. What a dickhead, eh? I'm sorry, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you, subscribe, 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 please do something from nothing that I can do, what I got to do and all that, I love you very much, you're beautiful, you're beautiful family, earth, 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 earth.